Welcome to Vention Tips. Today, we'll be covering inputs as variables and conditional commands in machine logic. For today's tutorial, we'll be using a vertically actuated testing jig, useful for cycle or stress testing components. In this session, our goal is to create a machine logic program that allows us to control the vertical position of the gantry via our push button module. If you'd like to follow along, you can find the design link in the description below. This session will be broken down into two main parts, inputs as variables and conditions. If you're following along using your own design, make sure you already have a machine motion controller. Now that we're ready, let's open up the machine logic editor at the top of your screen. As you can see here, we've pre-configured the machine. However, if you'd like to learn more about how you can do this yourself, you can refer back to our video on programming linear actuators found below. Part one, inputs as variables. Prior to creating the variables that we'll be using in our machine logic script, we'll need to configure the inputs themselves. In our case, this is the push button module. This device has two latching buttons that can be applied to many applications using machine logic. To be able to use them, we'll need to add two new inputs to our configuration. This is done by clicking Add Input and selecting the type of input from the drop-down menu. For us, we'll select the black button to be our first input and the white button to be our second. From here, you can give each button a name that is relevant to its desired function. For our testing jig, we'll have one button be labeled as up and the other one as down. Now we'll move over to the variables section in the Visual Sequence tab. Over here, we'll create the variables that will be linked to our inputs that we just defined. To do this, we'll add two new variables, this time selecting the option below inputs as variables. As you can see, it will automatically fill in the name from the respective inputs we just created. However, you can change it to something else if so desired. The variable name will be what is used throughout your program, and the input to track is the name of the configured input that you'd like to monitor. At any point in time, the variable's value will correspond to the state of that input. Part 2. Conditions As earlier stated, our goal is to create a program that will move the actuator gantry up or down depending on which button is pressed. To do this, we'll need a few child sequences. First, let's create a child sequence for each direction of motion. One will have the gantry move up in increments of 50 millimeters, and the second will move down by increments of 50 millimeters, both relative to its current position. We'll create another child sequence titled wait, and add a command that will have the system wait for a small amount of time. The sequence will be needed later on in our program. We'll create our final sequence and name it condition. This will be where we introduce condition statements to our script. To do so, click on add command and select add condition. The condition command executes a chosen sequence in series or in parallel if a user defined statement is true. These statements come in the form of a comparison between a primary value or variable to a secondary one. If the statement is not satisfied, it will not execute the sequence and will check the next conditional statement in the command. For our first condition, we're going to have our program check to see if our up button has been pressed. To do this, we'll have it look at our up variable and see if it is equal to 1. If the button has been pressed, it will be interpreted as activated, and the variable's value will be 1. If not, its value will be 0. If true, we'll have it execute our up child sequence. Next, we'll click else if to add a second condition that will check the same thing but for a down variable. If true, we'll have it execute our down child sequence. It should be noted that you can add as many else if conditions to the command as you'd like. To finish the command, we'll add an else condition that will execute a selected sequence if none of the prior conditions are met. In our case, we'll execute the wait sequence to allow the system to check for any change in state of the push button module. Now let's go back to our main sequence to finish our program. We'll add a loop command and have it loop our condition sequence forever. With this, it will continuously check if either of the buttons are pressed, and move the actuator in the corresponding direction. Now we'll run our program to show the three possible outcomes. First, if no button is pressed, the gantry will stay in place. Second, if the up button is pressed, the gantry will move up. Finally, if the down button is pressed, the gantry will move down. If you have any additional questions about variables or conditions, feel free to leave a comment in our user forum linked below. That wraps up our session on programming with inputs as variables and conditional commands. Thanks for watching and happy designing.